Welcome. Today's video is going to be on comparisons. I got a request a couple of weeks ago from a chapter from West Virginia. And they asked me if they if I would do a video on a couple of their uh, plants that are having a problem identifying. So I said, sure. And any of you chapters that are out there that has a special request, feel free to send them into the comment section below, and I'll see what I can do to kind of make that happen for you. So today, we're going to be looking at, first of all, two different kinds of uh, foxtail seeds, green foxtail seeds and yellow foxtail seeds. And also what I'm going to be looking at is quack grass as well as um, a perennial ryegrass. So, so we're going to look at all different kinds of things for quack grass and perennial where the foxtail, we're just going to be looking at the seeds. So let's go ahead and get started right away. At first blush, when you just first look at a uh, foxtail seed, they look remarkably the same. But under closer scrutiny and, and a viewing, you'll notice that some of the shapes are obviously starting to, to come out. So if you were to look at the green variety, you'll notice that these seeds look kind of remarkably like, well, a beetle. And uh, that's one of the differences. These hulls on the green variety, uh, if you were to grow some, some legs and antenna, look like probably some kind of like a lady um, a bug of some sort. So that, that's one of the differences. Um, the other thing is, if we were to take, to, take a look at uh, these hulls, uh, which I'm going to show you, it has two or three different parts to it. On the green uh, foxtail, they kind of look like, as I said, beetles. So let's take a little bit closer look as far as how to identify certain parts of the hull. Um, we're going to look at the plea and the gloom. The plea is the, the, the most outer uh, part of, of the hull. It wraps around the seed, and you can sometimes see part of the seed in the plea. And then kind of near the bottom edge of the seed is going to be the uh, gloom. Uh, the gloom doesn't cover quite as much uh, as the seed develops and actually becomes the seed. Uh, these two sometimes are, are shed. So when we take a look at uh, the polea, the polea is, this is what it looks, the seed looks like with the polea on. It's the outer edge. You can see it, it kind of has a faint border. It's not really thick border. And the seed itself is kind of granular in, in the green foxtail. Um, here's another picture of it. It's a little clearer. You'll notice that the seed itself is more shiny. The polea is kind of a duller, kind of a, a beige color. And the actual border between the polea and the seed is kind of narrow. So that's another distinction. It's beetle-shaped. The polea has a very thin ridge. And then the seed itself tends to be much more smooth. Again, if you were to look at this, Here's a, a seed. Um, the polea is, is not visible at this point. It's, it's much more smooth. It has kind of longitudinal lines on it. So let's kind of go on the other side and let's take a look at the yellow foxtail. The yellow foxtail hull is more football shaped. It's a little bit longer seed. It's a little bit bigger seed. Um, it, it's somewhere in the neighborhood. It's a little bit bigger than a, a one milliliter or one millimeter. So uh, that's football shape. Now, if the polea, uh, the other parts of the hull were taken out, the polea was, was left, um, it would look something like this. So when we look at the polea, you can see that it is a very distinctive, thick ridge between the polea and uh, the seed. So that's one of the, the main differences. Here's another example right there. To me, one of the most galvanizing features when we look at uh, the yellow foxtail seed is the fact that the seed is really rough. Um, it, it's ribbed. So when we look at this right here, you can see kind of those striations or lines running across. It's kind of ribbed, and if you were to rub your finger on it, it you would probably feel some of those ridges on it. So it's kind of rough, whereas a green foxtail seed is much more smooth. So let's move on to the next part. We're going to look at perennial uh, ryegrass as well as quack grass. And again, if you were to look at it on the field, chances are you might mistake them. So let's just look at the plant itself, and then we'll look at uh, the root system and, and the seeds. One of the first things, at least for me, when I see um, perennial grass, that's the grass that's on your right, um, it's very glossy. It's deep, dark green. It's uh, glossy. It has relatively thin leaves. 
And if you were to feel the, the leaves themselves, you don't see, you don't feel much of the, the ribs or the veins there. Um, but the main thing is this is deep, dark, uh, dark, glossy green. Whereas the quack grass is green, um, but it's not quite as deep and dark, and it's definitely not glossy. But the thing that that really separates the two is if you were to feel or even look at the sea, the uh, the leaves, which are a little bit fatter or, or wider than a perennial ryegrass, but sometimes it's hard to tell. Um, those veins are ribbed. So when you run your finger or your fingernail on it, you'll actually feel those veins kind of feel like ribs. The other thing is, is, those, is the uh, auricles. Now, I'm not going to go in great detail as far as naming the different kinds of of membranous tissues and and leaf parts but uh, auricles are little vestiges or little bitty membranous tissues that reside on the the leaves quack grass has very well developed auricles um, you can see them qu quite easily if you look at perennial ryegrass they're not as well developed they're kind of weak sometimes they're even absent so between the color of and glossiness of the um, the green on the leaves, if it's ribbed or not ribbed, and of course uh, the appearance of well-developed auricles are having absence. Those are the two major differences between quack grass and ryegrass. So let, let's take a look at the um, the flowers or the spikes. On the left hand side is quack grass, and again, if we take a look at the florets or flowers, they look a little uh, feathery or, or furry because they have hairs on them. They're not really ons, uh, they're, they're, they're more like hair. To make it kind of rough and, and ragged and hairy looking, um, and they're not, they're flat, uh, the florets are, are flattened, but also notice they're not very uh, thick. There's lots of space in between each of the, um, the florets. The same is true when we look at the florets on the perennial ryegrass. There's lots of space in between them, but where it gets different is there is no uh, hairs. It's glabrios on the florets. The other thing is they're much more flattened, and the hull, the parts of the hull are very well defined. It's, it's smooth. It's clear. You can see it. But also, if you look at the stem that they're mounted on, man, that's, that, that's pretty thick, whereas over here, it's really, really thin. This is a very strong, a very clear, a very flattened uh, floret. So there's a lot of difference, and it's another way that you can tell quack grass from perennial ryegrass is the robustness of, of the florets. And the last um, slide I want to show you today is quack grass. And, well, actually, it's quack grass, and, and you'll see why I didn't include the, the ryegrass. Both of those have, the quack grass and perennial ryegrass, both have fibrous root systems but what crack grass has or quack grass has are these rhizomes rhizomes are these specialized underground stems and that's why in a lot of states this grass is considered noxious and you can see that as soon as these rhizomes start to move uh, they start developing nodes and those nodes are the areas where other plants can develop because they send down roots and then the uh, leaves uh, spring out and the other thing at the very end of this rhizome is a very, very sharp um, rhizome that will pierce right through really um, tough soils like in clay settings. And then when we get to the seeds, you'll notice the quack grass, very skinny, very narrow, long kind of a seed. Um, but again, no ones. So quack grass, long, narrow, no seeds. Now, if you go over here to the perennial ryegrasses, you'll notice they're more boat-shaped with, with a definite on. Not all of them will have ons, like this one over here doesn't. They get broken off, but they do have ons. Um, but whether you get to see them or not, it kind of depends on how they were handled. And they're boat-shaped, and you can see the polia wraps fully around and kind of surrounds the seed itself. So, there you have it. Now, you also asked me if I would show you Speedwell as well as Ground Ivy. I'm still having a hard time finding your speed well because there's so many different types here in California trying to match uh, the one that's in West Virginia closely to the one in California. So I can do the comparison between speed well and uh, ground ivy. So um, watch for that one uh, fairly soon. Like I said, if you have any suggestions for me to make some comparison videos or some judging videos, let me know in the comments uh, below and I'll get them out to you as soon as I possibly can. 
So thank you much for watching, and we'll see you at the next competition.